Hey everyone, in this video we'll walk through dynamic equilibria in the context of acid and base dissociation. Before discussing the use of equilibrium constants in acid and base dissociation, it is important to have a brief understanding of what acids and bases are. There are various theories and definitions of acids and bases, so there is not a single answer to the question what are acids and bases. In the Arrhenius theory, Acids are molecules that dissociate to produce hydrogen ions in water, while bases are molecules that dissociate to produce hydroxide ions in water. Another prominent theory is the bronze de Lowry theory, which describes acids as proton donors and bases as proton acceptors. In this context, protons are synonymous with hydrogen ions. This is because a hydrogen ion is produced when a hydrogen atom loses its only electron, leaving behind a proton in the nucleus. So essentially, you can understand bronze de acids as molecules that donate or give away hydrogen ions, and bases are molecules that receive hydrogen ions. However, despite the similarity, the term proton is usually used when using the bronze de theory. In acid-base chemistry, the terms dissociation and ionization are often used interchangeably, but there's a discrete difference. Dissociation refers to the separation of hydrogen ion from the acid molecule. As dissociation occurs, ions are produced, namely the hydrogen ion and the conjugate base, which is also an ion. The conjugate base is the molecule formed after an acid molecule gives up its hydrogen ion. In this area of chemistry, dissociation and ionization refer to the same process shown in the diagram. Among acids, there are strong and weak acids. By definition, strong acids completely dissociate or ionize. For example, if there are four molecules of strong acid, all four molecules would dissociate to produce four hydrogen ions. A common example of this is hydrochloric acid. When writing the chemical equation for strong acid dissociation, a single forward arrow is used to indicate the process is complete. In contrast, weak acids partially dissociate. If there are four molecules of weak acids, only some, not all, molecules will dissociate to produce hydrogen ions. As you can see, only one molecule dissociates. An example of a weak acid is acetic acid, which is found in vinegar. Dissociation reactions of weak acids are always reversible, so a double arrow is used in the chemical equations. Since dynamic equilibria only occur and apply in reversible reactions, the focus of this video will be on weak acids only. Acid dissociation constant Ka is the equilibrium constant of a weak acid's dissociation. The expression Ka is simply the concentrations of ions divided by the concentration of the acid at equilibrium. The value of Ka reveals the ratio of the ions to the unionized acid, that is acid molecules that have not dissociated. One of the most important concepts I want you to take away from this video is that Ka is an indicator of a weak acid's strength. That is, what proportion of the acid molecules are able to dissociate to produce hydrogen ions. Remember that weak acids partially dissociate, but the word partial can mean as little as 1% of acid molecules or as much as 99%. Weak acids that dissociate more will produce more hydrogen ions and hence are described as stronger. Stronger acids therefore have a larger Ka value as a ratio between the ions and the unionized acid is increased. The table shows just some of the many examples of weak acids. These acids are listed in order of decreasing strength. Hydrofluoric acid is the strongest weak acid of the bunch because it has the largest Ka value, whereas hydrogen sulfide is the weakest acid out of the bunch because it has the smallest Ka value. Unlike acids, Dissociation or ionization of bases is not as straightforward. Dissociation, that is when a molecule separates into smaller components, only occur in Arrhenius bases. Since Arrhenius bases dissociate to produce hydroxide ions, dissociation and ionization refer to the same process. As you can see in the diagram, a molecule of hydroxide ion is produced 
when an Arrhenius space separates. Bronsted Lowry bases are proton acceptors by definition, and they are all weak bases. We will talk about strength of bases in a second. In contrast to Arrhenius bases, Bronsted Lowry bases do not dissociate, but only ionize by gaining a positively charged proton, that is a hydrogen ion. Through ionization, Bronsted Lowry bases are also able to produce hydroxyl ions. However, it is important to note that the production of hydroxyl ions in the ionization of a Bronsted Lowry base is not due to the base itself, but rather the water. The base receives a proton from the water, resulting in the formation of a hydroxyl ion and a conjugate acid. Strength of bases is determined in the same way as acids. Strong bases completely dissociate or ionize, whereas weak bases partially dissociate or ionize. A good rule to remember is that all bronsted lowry bases, that is compounds that accept protons, partially ionize and thus are weak in nature. A common and good example of a weak bronsted lowry base is ammonia, NH3. The base dissociation constant, Kb, is the equilibrium constant of a weak base's ionization. Using ammonia as an example, it is expressed as a concentration of ammonium and hydroxyl ions divided by the reactant ammonia. Since the amount of solvent, that is the water, is usually present in relatively large quantities and thus remains relatively constant, it is not included in the dissociation or ionization constant expression. Like the acid dissociation constant, Ka, the base dissociation constant, Kb, reveals the ratio of the ions to the unionized base, that is the ammonia in this case. As a result, Kb is an indicator of a base's strength. As stronger bases ionize more to produce more hydroxide ions, they have a larger Kb value. So stronger bases have larger Kb values.